The Sidewinder is the fastest snake in the world, reaching speeds up to 29 km per hour or 18 miles per hour, thanks to its unique movement. And today, I am introducing a melee-based armor core build that uses a combination of three pieces to achieve an extraordinary synergy when it comes to moving and dealing damage. The first piece is the Kikaku Booster. Now, the Kikaku Booster must be run with a melee weapon that can do a dash, because it specializes in its melee thrust and energy consumption. However, this booster is actually quite a niche booster, because approaching with melee boosting is not always good. Allow me to explain. By the nature of geometry, if your speed is the same as your opponent's speed, the chaser always has an advantage when it comes to closing distances. The only question is how. There are three main ways of gap closing to melee distance for a melee build. The first is quick boosting while moving towards your enemy, which the Kikaku doesn't excel at due to its mediocre quick boost stats and low base thrust. This is a relatively safe approach because the repeated quick boosts throw off the enemy's FCS. However, the faster booster on lighter weight setups tend to consume quite a bit of energy, especially for the distance they're covering. So this tends to be an energy heavy approach. Your legs will be bipeds if this is your main approach because you can't use the reverse joints floatier jumps. The second method is assault boosting, which is a method of closing distances for any weight class really. With good assault boost boosters like the Burzel, you're really fast for the amount of energy you're spending. You also get an impact damage reduction while assault boosting. The downside is that this is a very obvious approach without mix-ups, and it isn't exactly stamina friendly if you're adding quick boost to your assault boost in order to avoid frontal projectiles. The final method is to use a melee dash which requires a melee weapon that dashes. The best booster to do this with is our chosen Kikaku, due to its melee boost stats. Combined with melee cancelling, you can move forward quite quickly. However, this method of approach comes with an issue. Melee dashing, unlike quick boosts, does not throw the enemy FCS off during the dash, nor does it have a reduction for impact damage like assault boosts. Where melee dashing excels at with the Kikaku is its flexibility when it comes to the mix-ups of your movement, making your feints more dangerous because of the quick repositioning. The problem is, if you're running the Kikaku booster, you're a lot slower at neutral due to the much lower thrust. You also don't have great quick boosts nor assault boosts, limiting your approach options. To make full use of the Kikaku, we must take a look at the other items I've picked for the synergy. While Sidewinders are known for their speed, it is unwise to forget that these venomous rattlesnakes still have a deadly bite. And this build's fang of choice is the Laser Dagger. Besides being the overall cheapest melee weapon to slot, the Laser Dagger has the highest cooling. This allows us to play a melee build with a singular melee weapon instead of two and still be able to continuously make use of the Kikaku's strengths. It also has a very fast melee dash as you want to use the uncharged attack for your melee cancelling. This dash is quicker and comes out faster than alternatives such as the Pulse Blade's charged attack, giving us a very fast and fluid melee cancelling. The charged attack of the dagger isn't too spectacular as it has little horizontal movement and poor vertical tracking. You sort of have to wish that the enemy doesn't kite away from your melee build during the wind-up time, but under the right circumstances, this can still be good. The uncharged chain of the laser dagger doesn't stagger the enemy, so I don't advise using the whole chain while the enemy is not staggered, or when you won't stagger them on the first hit of your dagger. However, the laser dagger is actually great at punishing staggers, because as long as you land the first attack of the laser dagger while an enemy is staggered, the two subsequent hits are true combos, since each hit extends the stagger. Combined with the dagger's short cooldown, you can engage with this weapon 
and then use your other weapons or kicks before punishing with a dagger after their stagger. When you land your combo into a stagger punish in this build, it just feels amazing, especially when you can close off the combo with an assault armor too. With the Kikaku's melee thrust, you can easily land your dagger's first hit in time, even with a bit of distance. Talking about kicks, the final piece of our synergy is going to be using reverse joint legs, the mind beta for this build specifically. Crite, didn't you say that reverse joints have full tier grounded quick boost? Why are we running the reverse joints? Watch carefully. When cancelling a melee boost with a dash, the reverse joint's quick boost turns into a bipedal styled grounded quick boost. And we're running reverse joints because I want its more potent kick when it comes to both damage, impact, and accumulated impact for another method of doing damage and building up impact before we stagger the enemy, as the laser dagger is a limited engager. Because we don't want to assault boost for long distances, the extra 20 meters in range for the reverse joint kick also helps us better land our kicks. Furthermore, our high vertical jump does not hinder us, as we can close our distance and mainly cancel in the air as well. Having the aerial mobility thanks to approaching with the melee dash is a big advantage over approaching through grounded quick boost on bipeds. This is what truly completes the build's unpredictable yet agile movements. For the other pieces, I went with the Basho arms to maximize our stagger punish with the daggers, and it is also very stand dense. I'm using Abbot FCS for close range targeting in order to use our Zimmerman despite the Basho's poor target tracking. Shotguns don't suffer from the initial recoil, so we have the recoil ticked off as well. I'm running one Huxley's and one 6 missile launcher for additional impact buildup and some pokes and pressure at longer range to force a closer engagement. Feel free to mix up your back pieces. I'm running the Santai generator for its high capacity, as energy capacity is especially important for melee builds that burn a ton of energy. For the chest piece, I went with the VP40S, as reducing our quick boost cost while keeping a sizable generator output is the goal here. It's just a piece that fits the build the best while keeping us around 75k weight. Finally, for the headpiece, I suggest using the VP44D as its stat is skewed towards stability and we need a bit more stability which our other pieces don't provide. But I want to mention that the Alba headpiece looks a lot like the Sidewinder's head, especially with the protruding horns. And this is the full build. All right. Time to take a look at some PvP footage. I definitely need even more practice with this build to bring out its full potential, as I'm still not used to hard locking on PC, which is essential for the kicks. So this time, my commentary is going to be split into two types. I'm going to start off with some post-game commentary of matches that I played when I focused on practicing, and then give you some live commentary later. You can definitely see my plays improve across the sections, and I think there's still more untapped potential in this build. Like and subscribe. Okay, so the first thing you will probably realize is I keep accidentally moving my mouse, which is why the hard lock falls off very often. You can definitely tell this is one of my earlier matches because I definitely was not used to hard locking. And my plays are definitely not nearly as good as I want them to be because, well, there's a lot of things to manage like the Huxley's, your Zimmerman's, and even kicks or um, just the laser dagger. There's a lot of relatively short duration CDs and since I'm not used to hard locking, I'm also not really used to kicking, especially with the reverse joints. That kind of works like a spear because Reverse joints have a further kick distance, but the hitbox is relatively narrow, so if you don't hard lock, you will really have a tough time.
I'm definitely spamming a bit more kick than I want to just to get used to the distance and like when a kick would work and when it would not. You can definitely see like right there, that was not a great kick. The reason why I selected this opponent is because of the similarities of our build. Because we're both running reverse joints and laser daggers. But the thing is, he's running the Kasuars, which means that his weight is roughly going to be around 65k or 66k, whereas mine is 74.5k. This means that I have at least 8.5k weight worth of defense over him, which is quite significant. Has enough impact. Oh, and there we landed a kick and our laser dagger combo into assault armor, and that's that. The next match is against the same opponent, but I didn't realize that he swapped to assault armor. Again, as I said, I didn't expect him to swap to Assault Armor and uh, so I ate the Assault Armor there because I thought he was going to do Pulse Armor. But it's fine, we ended that with a kick with just a bit of HP. But again, because my weight is around 8.5k heavier, my kick damage is higher while I'm not really that much slower and I am much more tankier. So my build is definitely carrying me a bit over here when I'm not that good at playing the build yet because my optimization is better than his so I just get the raw advantage of having a better build. And that was just lag. But yeah. The weight difference definitely comes into play here because if you can make sure the stagger doesn't fall off, it's easier for us to stagger him and it's easier for us to finish him in one combo. But yes. And we trade the kicks and we win. This match happened after I practiced for a bit more and I'm gonna play against this opponent twice too. One thing I've noticed after the battle is I was definitely not using my stamina that well here and I should have been much more aggressive with my dagger to get close. When I was playing, I knew I didn't want to get too close because I know that he has a Harris and if he has some impact damage on me, he can land a 1250 impact shot with a Harris, which would be quite troublesome for me. like that and I definitely did not take full advantage of pressuring him over here and I let him pulse armor which was just a mistake. If I could have poked him better and just stayed on top of him I think I would have won. But basically this was the period where I'm not good enough at being aggressive while staying close. I do think that this build has a relatively higher skill cap because a lot of the moves you have to try to avoid while you're close to them. So 
you have to make use of your quick boost at the right time so that their FCS isn't always locked and dodging a lot of moves. And here you see you can even use your melee boost to dodge the missiles. And I definitely should not have done my full dagger move there. I wanted the first one to hit so, so that I could have staggered him, but it didn't work well. And over here, I definitely assault armor at the wrong timing, which is going to cost me the game later. But um, for some reason, I thought he was going to close in and um, damage me while I had the impact, while I was staggered. But that was my misplay. Okay, and this is the following round for a rematch after I've calmed down a bit. And I know his playstyle, he tries to space me out and uses his Harris into his Coral Rifle. He definitely has the advantage at a range and he tries to do enough impact damage that his Harris will stagger and then he can punish with a Coral Rifle. But even without, Coral Rifle can do quite a bit of damage if I don't dodge. And his overall chip, is just, chip damage is just stronger than me. That kick was definitely not good because I was directly under him. And I won my stamina back here. Just enough to maneuver better. And I'm, I was making sure that his impact gauge doesn't fall off by doing a bunch of pokes. And here I'm trying to get the stagger. I do not land it because he staggered me first. But his impact gauge has not completely fall off. And here I've comboed and I finally landed the stagger into my laser dagger and after his pulse armor we immediately respawn with assault armor which just negates his pulse armor and then there we go. Here we're fine jumping up, I definitely should have used my melee boost, I don't know why I didn't, but yeah I should have just melee boosted forward. When I was fighting him I was definitely still a bit more passive, but we managed to land the stagger into our laser dagger into our assault armor, and we basically, basically if we land a combo we do a ton of damage, so we have a very strong lead. But he landed his Harris into his Coral Rifle too. Thankfully we didn't take as much damage as our combo did. That was a bit far for the Assault Boost. I definitely should have Laser Daggered once first, cancelled it and then Assault Boosted. So that I don't have to cover that much distance with the Assault Boost. But thankfully our kick here can close the game off because of our very strong lead thanks to landing our combo. Alright, time for the live commentary PvP. A watermelon? A watermelon in the desert, how very fitting. In fact, Sidewinders live in the desert too, so this is a perfectly fitting matchup. Let's see if um, our snake is gonna turn into a herbivore today. Maybe we will successfully eat this watermelon. I think he's a melee build because I think he's using the fist, so you know what, we can we can troll around a bit and just do a bunch of reverse joint kicks. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take this first round. This first round is gonna be much more casual. Um, we both miss we both missed our kicks. His overall options are more limited because he doesn't have the ranged option. Um, since he opted for using fists to, you know, combo staggers, and there we landed the impact into our assault armor, the full combo, and he's dead, pretty much. So, okay. Alright, I should just end this. Um, I'm gonna try harder this round with less kick spam. And let's see if we can catch him in the combo again. Okay, so the main difference between our matchup is that he's using the pulse blade which has a much stronger charged attack and it's a good starter as a melee weapon much better than our dagger's charge attack but 
once again, he doesn't have the ranged option, so we have better pokes. And if we play it well and just use our Zimmermans and our back weapons for more stagger, we have the advantage here. And once again, I've landed the laser combo and a cinematic finish. So I guess the snake does eat the watermelon today. Hmm, a very strong mid-range build I would say because he has two laser cannons at his back and lasers are very fast and do a lot of damage. It's quite hard to deal with with our setup since when we melee dash, um, we're just gonna be eating the laser. He also has a bazooka and a redshift so this really is a problem. Oh, that's a very strong punish and we're already almost dead. So we have to put on the pressure. Okay, that was his bad play. Assault armor there into our laser dagger while our Huxleys were still shooting. So we pretty much turned the game around because of his quite big misplay. But yeah, that was definitely very scary. You can see how he has a very big advantage at a range or even at close distance. If I don't play well, it's much easier for him to stagger me. Okay, so we're gonna try and make sure our poke is on point here. Tank the bazooka shot with the assault. One swing of our dagger and he wasn't able to capitalize on the stagger that much. A single swing to get close, Zimmerman's and then once again into our dagger combo, into our assault armor, and there we go. But definitely a difficult matchup for the weapons he's running. Alright, this is a very heavy setup, and he has a he has one of those active homing missiles and Aurora to poke us at a range to, you know, sort of get people to get closer or like win the long distance trade, especially with his tankiness. Okay, Coral Rifle, I'm using my melee boost to get closer. We have to watch out for the KRSV because that thing can hit a lot of damage. I only assault boosted that far because because he's in tank tread his op and his options are all heavy weight so he couldn't punish us as much when he didn't have his weapons charged. And here I'm going to make try to bait out his KRSV, did not do it too successfully. A kick here, oh we just missed probably like 5 meters off. Unfortunate, but I don't think we have enough HP for this. Okay, we'll try to do better next round. It's difficult because at that close, at melee range KRSV shots, if the FCS is on us, we're just gonna be eating it. So we kind of have to um, do some dodges ahead of time to make sure it's not on us or we can dodge it successfully. Unfortunately, we still got hit there, but it is to be expected because of the range. We need to put on a lot of pressure and stagger into our laser dagger. This is our only way of um, putting on a lot of pressure is the only way we can beat him. Gonna get close, dodge his missiles with my melee boost, get close again. Pressure with the kick into Zimmermans. Oh, I should have definitely ended at two daggers but I didn't have much to use, so the third one didn't hurt us that, that much. And a stagger into another laser dagger, assault, and we did not even need the assault armor. Nice. Okay, so it's definitely winnable, but he's about twice as tanky as us. And with those kind of very punishing weapons, like the full charge of KRSV, and the coral rifle, it can be really scary. But here you can definitely see the Sidewinder's movements as I just do a bunch of, okay, and I got staggered. But yes, you can definitely mix up your movements 
by just kiting, melee dashing, and then assault boosting, etc. You can just use everything at your disposal. Oh, he post armor a bit late, so then he could he just tanked. Him. So then our assault armor wasn't able to peel off his post armor. I think that was actually a pretty good play on his part. Um, I should have definitely dodged the auroras a bit earlier, but it's fine. We need to dodge a bit and make sure the FCS isn't on us for the KRSV. Melee dance a bit and wait for the right time when you have enough energy and enough stagger. Up. Oh! Not good, I thought the first hit would have staggered him. Definitely overestimated the stagger there, unfortunately, but yep. Okay, we're gonna try again if I can get the rematch. Alright, the rematch. Let's see. So I already know his playstyle and it, it's definitely up to us to see how well we can respond now, since he's just very tanky and he has long range pokes and the missile to keep us on our feet but with proper movements we can definitely avoid a lot of damage the main thing we have to avoid is definitely the fully charged KRSV into his core rifle there we avoided the KRSV and into a kick we can eat the missile it's fine the, the damage is more important I, I definitely screwed up right there as I undid my hard lock I was trying to do another kick to punish him after the laser because I correctly predicted that he wasn't gonna use his pulse armor. And here, we're just gonna build up some more stagger, kick, nice, and just enough impact that I think the next laser dagger will do it. Nope, he didn't come in, so the charged laser dagger didn't hit, it's fine. A kick and a laser dagger combo and pulse armor, so we assault armor here to counter his pulse armor, nice. And a kick, no, that was not enough yet. Dodge that KRSV and a shot, nice, okay. Whew. This is just a very intense battle, honestly. It really depends on my plays. I have to make some really good plays and a lot of um, good movement to be able to um, counter his setup since his KRSV can really just take the pressure off him if he lands like that. So yeah, we have to play well and our miss out there helping us make sure the impact doesn't fall. I should definitely Use my hux. Oh, uh, the lag. But yeah, I should definitely use my hux leads a bit more. But it's fine. We landed here. Yeah, sometimes when the battle gets too heated, I kind of forget the hux leads because you know you have to mind so many things like the Zimmerman's, your daggers, your dash canceling, your kicks. So, but when the hux leads is out, you definitely do more impact to help you finish things off or get the stagger. Nice. We avoided the KRSV. And GG, I think this will be a great ending to the video, so like and subscribe. If you want to support my work, please consider buying my fantasy novel or donating to my Patreon down below. With a book purchase, you can also request a topic from me, Krite, signing out.